Started back in the 60s. We didn't know how to dance, so we came down and they had lessons on it. I think it was Tuesday night they had lessons, so we learned how to swear dance. My father taught me how to um, waltz, how to square dance, and the two-step and the foxtrot, that's right. Quite a variety of square dances, and there were, some were pretty complicated to learn. I mean, there was a lot of moves. Oh, you'd come in and walk in, and you'd, there'd be somebody, and the band would be up there. You know, the, the music and stuff, and hey, you come in, it's that, you just grab somebody and get going. Marguerite and Jesse Boynton bought the whole stock property, it was 100 acres at the time, because they wanted to raise chickens. So then they had the chickens in the big barn. Um, the, um, and they didn't really do anything with this barn at the time because there was just so much else to do. I married their son, Robert Boynton, in 1963. My father was a fiddle player and the, um, Bob's mother was very musical. She could play the accordion and the piano and, and sing. And so she wanted to run dances here. And so they decided that they would restore this from the old sheep barn. It was a, built for a sheep barn, 1835, right. So um, Bob's father and a friend of his um, they stripped it and made very similar to what you see today. Um, and they opened dances uh, there and they had just round dances at first. I remember Eleanor Round's father, Ellen, Les Hammond dated Eleanor. And he played the uh, trumpet. And he, he played a variety of instruments. Uh, when Fortunes closed, everybody was looking for a place to go. So then uh, it was announced that they were going to try having the square dances here. And uh, they were getting the folks for the band and said, come on over and try it. So we did. And that was it. Where my father had been playing for square dances up in Bradford, it burned down. So. Bob's mother says, well, if I can get Mike to play, we've got a big crowd. <laughs> He's got a big following. So that's what happened. He got my father to play. Yeah, well, I had the uh, Bradford uh, dance, but that, that was Saturday night also. So I don't know if one drew from the other, but uh, they always seem to have good attendance here. Every Saturday night. Every Saturday night? Every Saturday night I'd be there. Did you have any other siblings that came or just? My brother, Tom. Yes. Um, he also, once in a while, we call a square dance, and uh, and he also danced. He learned how to dance with my mom. When I first started, I think it was about six um, or seven years old. Um, my father taught me how to dance on his feet, and I would hold on to his hands. When my grandmom had teenager night on Friday nights, the parents would drop them off here and everybody in Dumbarton because we all went to school and we'd all come to the dance and they played records. She started it uh, so that the teenagers here in Dumbarton could have a place to come. And the most wonderful thing was the children that were a little bit older, like from you know, eight years old on up, they would come and square dance in a in a square with us, and everybody would just have a good time. Nobody got upset if they went the wrong way. they just turn them around and get them to go the right way. It wasn't something that was, you know, so strict and, and all. It was little kids and big kids. I just kind of like the rhythm of the dancing, and, you know, after a while, you dance enough with it and uh, get to know the tune and you know, the calls that go with it. And it was not at all un uncommon for us to uh, be dancing and calling, too. Could you give us a little sample? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> All you alamen left on your corner and yes, your grand I... white and raft on halfway round. When you meet your girl, you, I forget, and you promenade back home. <laughs> Red River Valley was that one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they had a callers, and then they'd, uh, they'd play a a waltz or something else, and they had different dances, there, like the shortage, and uh, we did the, like the Virginia reel and stuff like that. Lots of times the regular caller would uh, 
would decide he needed a break and they'd call me up and do my thing. And Jesse's wife, she was a tremendous cook and she used to make these great big donuts, I remember that, and they, they would have died for her. And she made like sandwiches on a bulky roll and like a chicken salad sandwich. And, I mean, it was just tremendous, her food. My grandmother it was the best cook ever. Uh, her homemade donuts were unreal. They were so delicious. The kitchen in the back, she had uh, was refreshments because a tradition at a, a square dance is that you danced from eight until about quarter past ten, and then they took an intermission and everybody went and got their hamburgers and hot dogs and drink, you know, eight, <laughs> and then they go back and play for another hour or so. So um, he was so frugal that he, <clears throat> they had a Coke machine with Coca-Cola in it and. Um, one of the old-fashioned red square ones and so he always got in the winter time go outside get some snow to fill the machine put the coke in and you're all set well it was got into the, I think it was the first week in June he went down and then up Winslow Road and there was a place that was completely shaded and the I there was still snow there and he went and dug out that ice to use so he didn't have to buy any ice <laughs> to cool it. One Saturday night a bunch of college-age students came over, and uh, Gail's mother and father came over with us that particular time, and they showed her father about a three-inch long firecracker that one of them had got. So Ross, her father, decided, well, you know, they can get in trouble if they have that. So he talked him into giving him the firecracker. So he had it in his hand, and it doing a fast polka, which was his favorite thing. He was dancing with her, I got up to the end by the fireplace. He dropped the firecracker on the ground, did a quick turn around, kicked it in the fireplace, and came the back time it down. Went off, we were sailing down the other <laughs> end. <too. laughs> oh. Was anyone hurt? <laughs> no, they had a few sparks come out on the floor. And I remember looking up there watching the band, and I remember the, the piano player, she just, Never missed a beat. She just went up, back down again, and kept right on playing. <laughs> she had uh, oh, Bill Marshall as as a, he was a town, a little, little tiny, tiny, and, and old, you know. And so finally, the, everybody used to say, you know, if you really get trouble out there, he's no good. And so she, you know, got these Phelps brothers from Ware, and they were famous for being, um, they were big, brawn, brawny. Nice. Yeah, they were police, and they. They knew how to handle themselves, and you know, if somebody was misbehaving, they weren't shy about correcting them. I talked to Sharon, uh, Joy Hammond, and I asked her to come because that's Les's sister. And uh, she said, I, I was talking to my sister Sharon, and she said uh, she wanted to relate this story about you and Les. And I said, okay. And she said, uh, you distracted Bill Marshall while Les let the air out of his tires. <laughs> Well, a lot of people, I, th I think they weren't really square dancers. They just come here to, to raise hell. You know? I remember one time they had a guy handcuffed on the ground right here. If anybody started acting up inside, a couple of guys would take, take him outside and talk to him, kind of educate him a little bit, and yeah. then there wasn't any problem. Uh, define educate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it was a family th event, and you know they didn't want any trouble. It was nice, the people were nice, they, they really had fun, it was, everything was so informal. I can remember I thought that hall was so big, you know, and now I come in I go, oh, it's smaller. <laughs> but it's beautiful. They've done a real good job restoring everything. 